Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today, we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves in the last week. Let's check them out. All right, before I show you the first new knife this week, I actually wanna show you a couple things uh, where you've got an opportunity to win a knife. And the first one is actually a raffle. We've got a, a William Henry that we're raffling right now. now a lot of folks I know are starting to you know, like go back to work, which is great, but there's still a lot of people out there that are hurting and a lot of people that need help. So we're using this knife to raise money for our local food bank here, and we'd appreciate any help that you guys might want to throw our way in that regard. The tickets on these are only 10 bucks a piece, or the tickets on this knife, I should say, are only 10 bucks a piece. And for that money, it really goes a long way because each 10 bucks is going to be able to generate 20 meals thanks to the, the good work that our food bank is doing. So we'll leave a link over to the raffle uh, page for this. If you want in on it, get your tickets and you know, we, we appreciate it very much. And it's a really cool knife too, I got to say. One of my favorite William Henry's I've seen in a while. Uh, it's one of their spear point models with a psychedelic frame. Those handles are full Moku tie, like this is not titanium or it's not just, just uh, plain titanium. It's a really exotic handle, and we've got a uh, boomerang Nichols Damascus blade coming in about, about three inches, really nice drop point or spear point profile as they're calling it. Deep carry clip, which is quite nice, and you can reverse that, so this is a great gentleman's EDC. Button lock, we've got Topaz uh, inlaid into the, uh, the hardware there. It's just a super, super classy piece, and it's quite an expensive piece normally. I think this is like a, um, I don't have the, the original price in front of me. I think this was like a $1,500 knife. Um, so I certainly would never be able to afford this. So something like this would be a great chance uh, for folks like me who can't afford this outright. At least you're gonna get a chance to win one and you're gonna help out some people in the process. Now this next knife, we're not raffling. We're actually just straight up giving this one away on our Instagram profile right now. So if you want a chance to win this, we're gonna leave a link to that post and you can follow the instructions there to enter. This is the Halfbreed Large Infantry Blade. And congratulations to Halfbreed who just made the cover of Blade Magazine, which phenomenal achievement and it's gotta feel really good. So to celebrate that, we're giving away this knife in cooperation with them right now. Normal price on these is 255, so if you wanna just buy one, you can. And Clearly you can see this is very heavily influenced by the old Mark II fighter, the K-Bar knife. You've got that same kind of clip point profile, but we've got D2 steel here, partial serrations, and some really nice jimping up here. It's really broad and the edges are all chamfered over very nicely. So it's gonna, it's gonna give you some surface area to bear down on, but it's not gonna be sharp or anything like that. Handles are G10, black G10, and we've got a uh, integrated guard as part of the actual tang of the knife. It's not a uh, old stamped guard like some of the uh, the old school Mark IIs. And it's a little bit uh, shorter here on the back side than it is on the, the index finger side. It makes it a little bit easier to choke up and use that jimping up there. The handles are contoured quite nicely. The tang sticks a little bit proud of it, but the, again, the edges are chamfered over there, so you don't really get any hot spots from the tang there. And of course, you've got the, uh, the pommel there that comes down to a, uh, a point. It's not a super sharp point, but it's definitely uh, good enough to concentrate your force into one specific spot. It also comes with a nice Kydex sheath, as you can see here, and they include a large tech lock right out of the box, so you don't have to add a piece of hardware there uh, to get all the different carry options that you can get from a typical tech lock. There's been a little bit of confusion as to where these Halfbreed blades are made, so I'll share with you what uh, they shared with us. Halfbreed is an Australian company, and they have the parts in this, of their, their knives, uh, their entire line made in Taiwan, sent to Australia where they're all assembled and finished and then shipped out to the rest of the world. So there you go. But again, if you want the chance to win this knife, it is going on on our Instagram profile, so follow the link in the description for that. All right, now for the first brand new knife, we're proud to be introducing a new model from LT Wright. This is the GP Medium, GP standing for general purpose. And you can see right away, this sort of has a kind of a stouter aesthetic than some of the other uh, LT, great LT Wright designs out there. Of course, they're more heavily known for their bushcraft and outdoor stuff. This GP being general purpose, I think it could still handle those types of things, but I think this is just a great heavier duty EDC fixed blade. If you're able to EDC a fixed blade, this would be a good option. 
prices on these start at about 139 for uh, for the natural micarta version we have right now. We've also got Python micarta and this version right here with black scales and orange liners, which looks quite good. That's black micarta scales. And the price goes up a little bit depending on which, uh, which option you choose. I think this one right here is 159 so a little bit of an upcharge over the, the base natural micarta version. The blade is AEBL and it's about three and an eighth of an inch, uh, so just over three inches long and a really broad shape. I mean, this knife feels like a bulldog, like it just wants to you know, rip through some stuff. But we've still got a pretty high flat grind, a, a saber grind. It's going to keep the edge geometry thin enough where you're going to be able to slice quite well. But still, I mean, like I said, I just I, I hold this and I feel like it's a bulldog. It just wants to grab onto a chore and just, argh, just tear it up. <laughs> I think it's going to be very nice. And I love that AEBL steel too, of course. Um, I'm a big fan of that stuff. Takes a really fine edge very nicely, holds an edge quite well, and it's a very tough steel for a stainless. Tougher than some carbon steels out there, which is quite a, quite a good bonus. There's a pretty generous amount of length on the handles. I've got slightly larger hands and I, I just fit there. Even if I'm wearing work gloves though, I think you could come on the other side of this beak there and still have plenty to hold on to without it getting in the way too much. And you've got a slightly fancier uh, pin treatment than they usually do on the LT Wright stuff with the four pins and the oversized lanyard hole right there. It is an LT Wright, so as you'd expect, we got a JRE Industries sheath. Simple pouch style sheath here with a uh, more traditional shape as opposed to some of their square bottom sheaths, but simple classic, nice wide belt loop so you can fit it through just about anything. All right, we've got another new model to unveil right now. A new custom from Andrew Demko, new custom designed the AD20 with his brand new Shark Lock. Really excited to have these in. Um, out of his uh, some of his proprietary locks out there, you've got like the Triad Lock, the Scorpion Lock, and now the Shark Lock, and I think this one is probably my favorite. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but we've got a couple variants here, or I've got a couple variants here in front of me. We actually have more than these in stock. They all come in at 825 right now. Here in front of me, I've got the drop point version as well as the clip point version. And you can get this clip point right now with or without this blade cutout. That blade itself is about three and five eighths of an inch long. And this is CPM 20 CV with a hollow grind. Although this particular uh, drop point has a flat grind as opposed to that hollow. Steel's a bit on the thicker side. I think it looks about uh, 3 16 just by my eyeball calipers right there. And given this thickness and the size, I actually like the hollow grind a little bit better, even though I'm more of a flat grind person in general, because uh, it keeps the, uh, the cutting geometry a little thinner behind the edge, but it's still gonna be plenty stout for any of your EDC and tactical needs that you'd wanna press this knife into. Handles are G10, we've got a little bit of texturing there, as well as a right side pocket clip that holds the blade tip up. But back to the lock, as I said, it's called the shark lock, because you have sort of a dorsal fin look here sticking out the back. When it's open, it doesn't get in the way, which the, you know, I'm always worried if something's sticking out from the spine, how it's gonna actually feel. Because of the way this handle is designed, it works very well as a nice thumb ramp, but you've still got an area to put your thumb in front of it and choke up on the blade, because you've got a little bit of a choil there too, or uh, not so much a choil, but an actual uh, kind of an index finger ramp there. It doesn't get in the way either. It stays right out of the way of your thumb, uh, your thumb finger, so I'm not too worried about that being uncomfortable at all. The way it works, as you pull the bar, you actually pull the bar back towards the, the uh, rear end of the knife, and as you do, it kind of lifts up a little bit, as you can see, we'll try to get a good angle of that, and then that releases the blade. What's nice about this, I'll tell you, I always appreciate a lock that allows you to open and close the blade, close specifically, close the blade, while keeping your fingers out of the path of the edge. It's just inherently safer since you're not having to cross over, there's much less chance of actually uh, you know, getting yourself in trouble there. One thing that's funny though, with that sticking out here, um, instinctually you might try to flip it because it, it looks almost like a uh, like a flipper uh, is sticking out the back there. And that's just, we see so many flippers nowadays that that's just an ingrained habit. However, it does release the blade a little bit. You can see it kind of pushes it up. But even though it's not a flipper, you are able to flick this open and closed with just a little bit of wrist action while you hold that lock bar back. So it's still nice and fidgety if that's your thing. Definitely more fidgety uh, than the Triad or the Scorpion lock. But you just hold that back, give it a little bit of wrist. There you go. You can do the same thing on the close. This other one is also quite nice. And I'm going to indulge a little bit of uh, silliness now. 
That's very fun. I think it's going to be very secure. Uh, Demco is telling us it's very, uh, very strong locking mechanism. It certainly works very well. Um, and it's, it's just another new cool locking mechanism that I think is definitely worth it. All right, next is something that's very exciting. We've actually been adding uh, a number of Randall knives to our inventory of late. And this is your chance, guys. Like, I know the wait list for Randall right now is still something like six plus years. If you don't want to wait six years, we've got a few models for you right now that you could purchase. This one right here is the Model 18 Attack Survival. It's definitely one of those Rambo knives for sure. And it's got the hollow handle, and I'll show you what's, uh, what's in there in just a second and it feels really solid. Randall is one of the companies I would, uh, wouldn't have any hesitation trusting a knife like this. Uh, some of the cheaper things out there, I'm always a little leery about the strength, but this thing absolutely feels 100% solid. This model's listed for 825 right now. Got a blade seven and a half inches long, and you do have a sharpened rear edge here, which is quite nice. You've got that drop point shape where flat ground on the top and the bottom, sharpened rear edge, as I said, and you've got these saw teeth here on the back. They're not offset though, they are in line, so keep that in mind if you're interested in this design. We've got the oblong brass hilt here, and you've got two, uh, two lashing points here on either side. And pay no attention to the, uh, the slight scuffs here. This one is not from our inventory. This is one that uh, one of our employees here purchased for himself. Um, so he's already kind of been uh, taking it around and using it. That's why there's a little bit of wear there. The stuff that's in our inventory will not have that. So just, uh, yeah, don't, don't be shied off by what you see there on the screen. You've got your knurled handle as well as the knurled brass cap on the back. And you don't get any sort of um, survival goodies pre-installed. You've got space to put it, but you do have a compass there in the, uh, on the underside of the screw cap itself. Of course, you've got O-rings there, so this section is watertight. It's just a really cool knife overall. It even comes with a very nice sheath. It's nice high quality leather. You've got a, uh, a red sharpening stone here on the front, retention strap here, and some paracord for lashing. Just a very classic, uh, classic iteration from Randall. But at the time we're shooting this video, this is the only one we have live on our site, but we are adding more. Uh, by the time this video goes up, we may have even more than this on the site. So make sure to check out the link that we leave in the description. And you don't have to wait six years to get one. All right, now we're gonna go from the expensive side of things down to some budget stuff with a new Baron Sung's butterfly knife. Uh, this is a Knife Center exclusive. Everything else is their standard uh, butterfly knife construction coming in at 40 bucks. Now, like all butterfly knives you can buy here, these are made in the United States and the quality is decent. It's not going to flip as well as uh, some of the like the hundred dollar price point and up butterfly knives will, but it is certainly good enough to get you started in the hobby. If you're kind of you want to dip your toes in the water, there's nothing better than uh, one of these Baron Sons knives. If you're again, if you're on a budget and you want an actual live bladed balisong. Now the handles are stainless steel and we've got a zinc coating that gives it a little bit of traction between that and the holes in the in those handles that remove a little bit of weight. You're going to have plenty, uh, plenty of good grip here. It's not going to be a slick handle as you learn your tricks. And we've got a black and a gray version right now. We've got pinned construction that feels pretty solid. Now I don't pretend to really know what I'm doing <laughs> when it comes to uh, butterfly knife flipping. I've got a little bit, I've got my opening closed down and the action on these is decent. Again, it's a $40 knife and a great way to get started in the hobby if you're not sure if you really want to pursue it yet or not. All right, let's take a look at a couple new Kaisers. I showed you some last week and as promised, I've got a few more from the batch that, uh, that landed that week. This is the new Flip Shank, which is a design, I'm going to say, is, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Alex Shunara, Shunara, something like that. Cool little design coming in at 109 right now. The blade is about 1.9 inches. We've got S35 VN and a little bit of a finger choil there as well. So we've, even though it's short, we've got some pretty, uh, sort of a pretty broad profile and that finger choil that still lets you get kind of a three and a half finger grip on the blade. So you got a very good amount of control over the edge itself. It is a titanium frame lock. We've got G10 on the front with sort of some, uh, some wavy or, or riverbed lines, uh, lines milled into it. We've got ball bearings in the pivot, as you would expect. And it is a little bit more uh, tricky to flip just because of the size of it. Uh, that's no fault of the, uh, the detent or the tuning they've done on this knife. Typical Kaiser quality, it's quite good. Um, it's just due to the size and the shape of the knife itself. 
Also, I do have, again, slightly larger hands, so it could be my hand size working on that as well. But for a small EDC that's a little bit different, this is certainly going to do quite well. Got that nice milled titanium pocket clip. It's got all the premium titanium frame lock flipper features you want. Again, coming in 109. If you want something a bit bigger, you can certainly get that without spending too much more, uh, actually. This is the Raha designed by Sebastian Irawan coming in at 159. We've got a lot more blade length here, uh, about three and three quarters, S35 VN again, nice stone washed finish that's gonna work great as you start to use it and put some scratches on the blade. The profile's got some nice wavy contours to it, some nice lines going on, and a lot of length there. I mean, again, slightly larger hands, I've still got a little bit sticking out here uh, behind my pinky so that, you know, if I had six fingers, if I were the six fingered man, I could probably get all six fingers on here. And you've got that choil for choking up as well for finer control of that blade itself. That blade is sort of a clipped off sheep's foot profile with a bit of a, a gentle but continuous curve to it. It's going to be a really nice slicer and you're still going to be able to use that tip really effectively on, uh, on draw cuts or scoring or anything like that. Milled titanium pocket clip again, right side tip up. A uh, backspacer that has a few cutouts so you see a little bit of a pass through there. Ball bearings in the pivot, excellent flipping action. Really, you can't go wrong. It's just a really, uh, a very distinct design from Kaiser right now. Although last week we, uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but we had something that was kind of similar uh, in blade shape, but a little bit smaller. Um, so go check out that video. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. You'll have to go look it up. All right, we've got a new Gerber multi-tool to show you. This is called the Truss. And as you can see, it gets its name from these sort of triangular cutouts here uh, on each side of the handle. This is a pliers-based multi-tool and it's spring loaded as well. So you can see as I push it down, it's gonna spring back out a little bit, which can be a little bit easier to, uh, or a little bit more handy to manage uh, for some of the day-to-day -day tasks. You know, you're not having to actually push the, uh, the jaws back out when you're using it. Speaking of those jaws, you've got your needle nose section, you've got your main plier section, as well as a wire cutter section here at the base. Now the rest of the tools actually all open from the outside. There's no inner opening tools at all, which is quite nice. As far as cutting edges, this is, these are just some simple stainless steel construction. We've got two drop point blades, each with a one hand opening slot, uh, one with partial serrations that uh, take up about two thirds of the blade, stop right before the belly, as well as a plain edge version. You've also got your wood saw on one side and a pair of scissors that I'm actually pretty, uh, pretty happy with. It feels very stout. It's not a huge uh, set of blades, but it feel, the jaws themselves feel really solid. There's some good spring action on it. So it feels like you're, you know, you're gonna be able to do some, uh, just some really good work with this. Did I mention the tools are locking? You can see right here, we've got a uh, release. You just uh, pull that back and you're able to close the tool right there. Beyond that, you've got your normal bevy of uh, screwdrivers. Uh, you've got your bottle opener, or sorry, Bottle opener here, can opener there with uh, a little screwdriver at the tip. We've got a screwdriver here with a file on one side and uh, some inch and centimeter markings on the back. Just a pretty well thought out set of tools overall. Phillips head over here, uh, another, uh, another small flat head. You can check out the full, full tool listing at the, uh, the product page. These come in at 46 bucks. And yes, they do come with a sheath as well. Simple nylon sheath. Velcro on the front pouch here, and you can carry it, which is, this is quite nice, either horizontally with these two loops or vertically in a more traditional fashion, whichever one you like. All right, we've got a couple of smaller fixed blades from Boker Plus right now. This first is, well, you can pretty much tell right away that this is a Jesper Vaknea's design. This is the Primate Pro coming in at about 8250 right now. You know, with a name like Primate, you'd expect a pretty stout build quality, and you definitely get that here. Nice thick blade stock, D2 steel, stone wash finish, great for those working knives. And as you can see, or might be able to see, we've got a pretty dramatic hollow grind here. So kind of similar to uh, the 8020 from before, we've got some nice full thickness at the spine for, uh, for structural rigidity, for that primate uh, use, usage, but you've still got a fine enough edge and a, a thin enough edge that you're gonna be able to cut fairly well with. The handles themselves are black G10, and we've got a nice red liner underneath of those. And you've got a bit of a scalloped uh, treatment here, like a, a mountain tread type of finish, 
that actually fits into your hand pretty well. It doesn't feel like it's gonna raise any hot spots due to that actual finish, because at least for my hands, my fingers actually coincide with those grooves quite nicely. Of course, you've got your holes here. This is probably not a knife that you're gonna be lashing to a stick to use as a survival spear, um, but they look pretty cool. And you could, of course, add some lanyard, uh, lanyard attachments here at the back. If you want a little more handle length, you can give yourself something to grab onto, or if you just wanna personalize it a little bit. But I think it's gonna be a really good utility knife for just everyday tasks, and they make it easy to carry too. You've got a Kydex sheath, snaps in pretty well. You've got a, a drainage slot essentially here at the back, and it does come with a with its own modular belt attachment, which is uh, it's kind of sealed up, so I didn't open it. But this whole pattern here will fit a standard size Blade Tech tech lock as well. They've actually finished the sheath overall quite well. There's a neat treatment right here. You can see where they kind of ground away a bit of the Kydex. So you have a very smooth transition from the steel or the handle of the knife into the sheath itself. Uh, something you don't really see too much of. So it's just a really nicely considered uh, design choice right there. Next up is their small Beowulf design. There's also a large version. Uh, the small comes in with about a three inch blade of N690 and the knife comes in at about 123 right now. It's definitely an aggressive shape, but there's a lot of belly here as well. I don't really think this is gonna be a tactical design. I think the tip is a little bit too thick for that, but good for everyday utility, good for a small but stout hunting knife. You've got, again, a ton of belly there and you can get your fingertip right out to the point of the knife as well. So you've got an excellent sweeping slicing section right here for those long skinning tasks that you might need. Again, we've got a nice heavy stone washed finish and that fuller there to kind of break up the lines a little bit because this is a pretty tall, uh, tall blade profile overall. So that's good to have that little bit of visual, uh, visual breakup right there. Got G10 handles with a little bit of texture or a little bit of scalloping here, uh, breaking over the edges. As you can see, we've got a lanyard hole here, as well as a hole here up near the, uh, the front of the blade as well. We've got a bit of a protruding pommel here that has a little bit of jimping on it. The point itself is not uh, super sharp. It's rounded over a little bit, uh, which is gonna be good as you're carrying it. It uh, stands less chance of jabbing into you as you're moving around. We've got a similar story on this boker when it comes to the sheath itself. Again, Kydex. Uh, it's not uh, eased over like the uh, previous one was, but like that previous one, it does come with its own modular attachment, uh, and these holes actually fit that tech lock as well. Finally, we've got one more fixed blade from Boker right now. This is actually an extension of their Outdoorsman series. This is the Mini Outdoorsman, with the blade coming in about two and a quarter inches right now. Price on these are about 41, uh, just over 41 bucks right now. And as you can see, you know, it's not gonna be your primary belt knife for sure, but this could be a good, uh, a good knife to buy uh, for some of the younger ones out there, if you're starting to teach them about knife safety and that sort of thing, this could be a good manageable length for them. I think it's also gonna make a really nice small utility knife. Uh, would work well, not as a fillet knife, but maybe in a tackle box. Would work pretty well as a whittler. And again, a small hunting knife. You can get your finger right out there near the tip. You've got a good enough amount of belly there to do those sweeping cuts. And you've got 12C27 uh, stainless steel as well. Good Sandvik Swedish steel fine-grained, fairly tough, just a good all-around performer in this price range. We've got a two-tone synthetic handle. The uh, gray section here is a little bit grippier, while the black is a little bit harder, more, more of a hard plastic variety. But even though this is a smaller knife, you can still get a full enough hold on it. I just barely have enough room with my slightly larger hands there. Uh, I'm kind of creeping up a little bit onto the front and the back here, but it's not too bad that it would be uncomfortable if I were actually using the knife. Like the rest of the Outdoorsman series, you've got the uh, protruding pommel right there with a couple of lanyard holes. Now this is not a crisp uh, pommel back here. Uh, the edges are rounded, so you're not gonna be doing too much scraping with it as is, but it is gonna be useful if you need to pound on the back of that at all, or even possibly use it as a small hammer uh, if you need to drive in a tent stake or something in a pinch. Be careful, of course. Now if it were me, I'd probably run this along my knife grinder uh, a little bit, just get a little bit of a crisp edge right there. That way you could use it to strike a fire steel, scrape bark for, uh, for tinder, um, or even scrape out a bowl if you're using an ember to uh, kind of burn out a spoon or a bowl. I found this sort of thing to be very useful uh, for scraping away the, uh, the charred wood as you go. But if you don't wanna do that, it's still a capable knife, but that's just me. You know, I like to mod stuff when I, if I feel like it, and I think that would be a great mod for you to do. Sheath, again, is Kydex. 
Uh, it does come with its own modular attachment and the holes on here actually fit the small tech lock a little better than the, uh, the standard size tech lock. I think these two here uh, do it just about right with the large, uh, but down here the, uh, the small tech lock will do quite well for you. Next up, you've seen us show you the uh, Spartan professional grade knives so far, but we've now got the green version of the Alala fixed blade in stock. So I think we've got black and green on all three of their new models right now. This one made in the US comes in 159. We've got 1095 CV carbon steel, as again, this is made by K-Bar in partnership with Spartan. Uh, blade length is about three and three quarters, so it comes in under that four inch length. Steel is pretty thick at about three sixteenths, so it's gonna be very stout with a, uh, a high flat grind to balance things out just a little bit. Got your green G10 with that checkered pattern milled in, so you get a little bit of extra grip there, but it's thin overall, so it's gonna carry nice and compact and real close into the body. Now on some of the larger knives, I uh, kind of wish there might be a little bit more, more thickness, but on a smaller knife like this, I actually think it works very well. It nestles into the hand quite nicely, and you're gonna be able to get a uh, good amount of control and power behind that edge. I think this would be good for outdoor usage, certainly, as well as your backup tactical uses, because you do have a little bit of a finger guard there. It's not super aggressive so that it gets in the way too badly, and a nice thumb ramp there for extra traction. Now Spartan have been getting a lot of credit for their sheaths with these designs and deservedly so. There's a lot you can do with this. I'm gonna click it in. First thing you see, you've actually got a release button here, or a release tab. So it's, uh, it's not held in uh, like Kydex with a sort of a positive retention from the sheath itself. You've actually got a small tab, a metal tab, that releases when you push this up and that actually interfaces with the jimping on the back of that thumb ramp. So it's pretty cool. You actually have to push that button if you want to remove the sheath. In addition to that, the carry options are going to be quite versatile. This small one comes with two straps, actually. We've got a shorter one here uh, that allows you to, uh, to carry it on your belt, as well as a slightly longer one where you could actually, uh, you could wrap it around and carry it cross draw if you like as well. I think this would be fairly decent in the pocket clip or, or uh, in the pocket if you include something like an ulti clip. And because of the, uh, the holes next to these land or next to these slots, you can use both your large and small tech locks as well. So definitely a lot of options there and US made quality and Spartan design behind it. It's really, really hard to go wrong. All right, next we've got something that's still utilitarian, but a little bit nicer. Uh, it's a new uh, Tomahawk from Condor. This is the Blue River. Uh, and there's also a, uh, a machete version with a, with a similar, uh, similar aesthetic to this. Uh, but this Tomahawk comes in at 106, and it's made with 1075 high carbon steel, as you would expect from a Condor. It's finished pretty nicely, I must say. The real story here, though, is the uh, slightly more decorative handles. You've still got the, uh, the typical uh, Condor hardwood, but you've got some white liners and a really cool diagonal spacer here that's actually made with a synthetic or a, a reconstituted turquoise. Uh, which is pretty cool. I've actually used a similar material in some of the knives I've made myself, and it finishes really nicely and just adds that touch of class. And it gives you sort of that Native American look in this case as well, which is actually bolstered by the sheath design. It's leather, as you can see. You've got a swiveling belt loop here, but you've got that stitched pattern here at the top, which again, kind of completes the look. It's very nice, but it's still gonna work exceptionally well for you as a small camp hatchet. The edge here is quite nice, and you've even got an uh, edge here at the back or on, on the underside of the beard that is sharpened as well. So this really would fulfill the roles of a, uh, of a traditional or old school tomahawk, which was also a, you know, an offensive weapon in addition to uh, just your utility out there in the woods. Got a little bit of cool file work here at the top too. Again, if you want something that's gonna do the job, but look a little nicer than just your run of the mill stuff out there, these are gonna be really nice. All right, now I've got one more fixed blade this week. This is from Tops. This is the Tidal Force Cleaver Karambit coming in at about 154. Being a Tops, it's made in the USA, right there in, I in Idaho, in fact. And I really like the way they've uh, done the logo on the back there. It's pretty, a pretty cool treatment. We've got 1095 carbon steel with this kind of dark gray powder coating, burlap micarta handles, again, which is very cool, and that Karambit style ring there at the back. Now, I wouldn't recommend uh, holding it like a typical karambit, although it kind of feels nice, 
Uh, but that's obviously not the intended purpose, at least I don't think it is. This is going to be just a, uh, a great meat cleaver. Um, you know, camp, uh, ugh, sorry, camp chores, working around the kitchen, um, maybe even doing some things like splitting wood, uh, doing some batoning at camp. This would certainly work pretty well there. And then you can take it over to your, uh, your camp kitchen and cut through some stuff uh, and get your meals prepped. I almost forgot to mention the uh, hunting applications. As a hunting cleaver, if you need to get uh, kind of blast through some joints or bone, that's certainly going to be a nice option if that's the style of uh, knife or uh, one of the styles of knives you like to employ in your field dressing kit. And especially in those situations where things are going to be wet and messy, you've got that karambit ring for a little bit of extra retention. You're less likely, likely to lose your grip on the knife. But I really think the utility of this knife comes down pretty much to chopping only, uh, and, well, and the the batoning as well, the splitting. It's not really a knife. Um, eh, maybe I changed my mind a little bit. You can kind of grip it without the ring. It's a little bit cramped, uh, but the edge is a little far away to be doing uh, you know, finer carving. If you needed to do it, you could do it in a pinch, but you're probably going to want to choose something else. The sheath is done quite well. Kydex again comes with Topps' trusty survival whistle attached, which of course you can remove if you want. As far as belt carry, you've got a swiveling loop here with a really heavy duty D-ring and a uh, removable dangler with two snaps. Now, if you're not going to be carrying this on your belt and you just want it to be part of your camping or hunting kit, you can actually remove this swivel right here so you've just got the kydex left over. That way you can pop the knife in there into the sheath and it'll fit uh, a little bit better into maybe some tighter places without this getting in your way. If you want something else though, large tech lock will fit this whole pattern uh, so you can use that if you wish. All right, last but not least, we've got a new stropping, or more than just strop actually, a sharpening and stropping accessory from uh, Harold Sullingen. This is their four-sided paddle straight razor strop uh, coming in at about 77 bucks right now. But it's good for more than just a straight razor, even though that's kind of its main intended purpose. What's unique about this, as opposed to the, uh, the sort of other strop bats and paddle strops out there, is that it's not just a strop in that you've got sections of leather, you've actually got a very fine grained sharpening stone on one side as well. So you've really got everything uh, you need in here for everything except the real heaviest of, uh, of touch up jobs all in one piece right here. You start with that fine grained stone and move over to the, uh, the red impregnated leather followed by the black. Those are preloaded with compound or stropping paste as they call it and you finally finish things out on the bare leather. And they've even numbered uh, the order you're going to use here. You've got two, three, and four, just as a sort of a, a visual reminder in case you forget. But what I really like about this style uh, of stropping mechanism, uh, I, you guys see me talk about the JRE's strop bat as well, is you can, in addition to using the, the handhold here and using it freehand, you can also set it on the countertop as well and use it as sort of a bench stone or bench strop. So if you're more familiar with that, more comfortable with that type of motion, that's something you can't do with some of the flat paddle strops out there. So I always really appreciate that. But in addition to this four-sided strop, we do have another uh, new strop that we've just added to our site from this company. Uh, a two-sided thing, a more typical flat style of paddle strop, if you prefer. We'll leave links down there to all of those so you can get your hands on them if you want. All right, everyone, that's all the new stuff I've got to show you this week. Love to hear your thoughts on all of them. Make sure to leave a comment letting us know which one was your favorite right here. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down there. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description. It'll take you over to knifecenter.com. And again, make sure you, t you check out those links for the raffle that we're doing for our local food bank, as well as that half-breed giveaway if you want to have a chance to win that as well. But while you're over at our website, make sure you're signed up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.